Hello, and welcome to the new Building with AppSheet series, where we will discuss and demonstrate how to build applications with AppSheet and Google technologies. I'm Christian Schalk, a Google developer advocate, and in this first episode, we'll review the basics of AppSheet and how it can help Google Workspace users streamline processes and increase productivity. So first off, what is AppSheet? AppSheet is a powerful and agile no-code application development platform that is now a part of Google Cloud. It's powerful in that it can easily generate feature-rich enterprise class applications with unprecedented ease and speed. It's agile in that it provides an iterative environment to quickly prototype and customize apps in real time, thus streamlining the overall application development process. AppSheet's no-code approach offers citizen developers easy-to-use interactive UI generation and customization, along with assisted workflow logic construction, both of which greatly simplify the most challenging aspects of enterprise application development. AppSheet integrates with Google's in that it lets users leverage the features of their favorite Google technologies. Here are some of the existing integrations with more to follow. First off, Google Sheets and Drive now offer built-in product integrations with AppSheet, meaning that you can create applications directly from both Sheets and Drive. AppSheet can now connect to AppScript, allowing Google Workspace users to connect their existing AppScript code with AppSheet front-end applications. Also, AppSheet allows you to connect to Google Cloud SQL, as well as any other cloud-based MySQL database. And finally, through its Google Cloud Apigee connector, AppSheet can also connect to the vast set of APIs and services that Apigee currently supports. Before diving into all of these cool new features, let's first step through an introductory example of AppSheet application development. To get started, we will start with a common task tracking use case which starts out with a Google Sheet. I will then quickly generate and customize a modern business app on top of it with AppSheet. So as you can see, I have a simple sheet which keeps track of tasks. So normally I would switch over to AppSheet and build the app from scratch directly. But thanks to the new integration, I just select the tools menu and generate a new application in AppSheet. So now AppSheet is taking over and building us a new default application without writing any code. And there we go. We are now looking at the AppSheet environment and you can see that on the left side, we have the different tabs. And the first data tab there is what we're looking at here with the different columns from our spreadsheet. And then of course, UX is where we can update the UI or essentially the user interface. And so we have a default UI. And then of course, there's other features like behavior um, and workflows and such, but we'll get into that later. For now, let's go ahead and customize the data a bit. And we're gonna look at the data columns as we edit in the application. And of course, keep in mind on the right side, we have a nice preview capability that's constantly being updated. And so I can actually go through and test it on the fly with actual data and just make sure the application is functioning correctly, right? So for example, I could edit, you know, edit or add data um, and everything just works as you expect it to. Now, as you notice, there are a few things I might want to improve on this app. So first off, when I create, to create a new record or a new task, I might wanna restrict some of the values. So the priority right now allows any number. So I'm gonna make it so that I wanna have values between one and four. I can also set the due date to be some date into the future. And then also for the status, I want to restrict it to, to have the only specific values, not any kind of random text. So this is all very easy to do. So let's just go ahead and switch back to the column editor and we'll start updating some of the input uh, options for the columns. So first off, the priority, as I said, I want to restrict it between values four and one. So the maximum is four, minimum is one. And so let's go ahead and set also an initial value for this to be also four. Now you'll notice here, this is an ex expression assistant and this allows us to uh, derive data dynamically. And this tool uh, helps you evaluate and make sure that it's valid. So it gives you that little green checkbox there to let you know that you have uh, the correct values. Now for this, it's just a simple static value, but later on you'll see that it will be uh, evaluating functions. All right, so everything looks good here. I'll go ahead and finish up for this particular column for the priority. Oh, also what, I'm gonna change the display mode to range mode. And that will give us like a nice uh, slider. So the slider is just a little bit easier to use, all right? 
So that's the priority. Now let's go to the due date. I want to change it such that the date that gets uh, defaulted will not just be today, but it will be a date into the future. And so for this, I'm going to insert a fr function called workday, and that takes two arguments. It takes the current day or whatever date, and then I'm going to give it the second argument of how many days into the future do I want? So I'll select five, and I want five work days into the future, basically. So that evaluates correctly. I'll click Save, and I'll click Done. And then now, for the final column, I'm going to update the status column such that I'm going to switch it from a text data type, uh, which allows any random text, and then I'm going to switch it to enum. And then the enum will make it so that I can define specific values that I want for this column. So I'll use like the typical status uh, values, like not started would be the first one. Uh, then I'll add like another value, which would be in progress. And you could probably guess the, uh, the last column, which will be complete. All right, so that's it. Now, the only other thing I'm gonna do is just add the auto compute or the initial value. And for this one, I'm just going to put the static value of not started. So that means, you know, once I create a new record, it'll just assume that it's going to be not started. So I'll click save there and I'll click done. And then I'll just save the entire application to get everything synchronized. So once everything is synchronized, uh, our preview window will refresh as well. And then we can go through and try out the application with the new updates. So let's go ahead and add a new record. So here's the task input form. I'm going to type in something here. Finish demo. We have our fancy slider, so maybe I'll give it priority two. And you'll notice the due date is a couple days. In the, it's actually five days specifically, five work days specifically. And then notice that our little uh, enum has rendered as a set of uh, buttons there. So I'm just, I'm just going to select in progress and click save. So there's a little area there where it's letting you know that it's synchronizing with the data. So let's go ahead and take a look at the data itself. And there we are in the sheet, and we can see our new record. So as you can see, in just a few minutes, I was able to create a functioning modern web application based off of a Google Sheet, all without no code. So for more information on AppSheet, Google Cloud, and Google Workspace, check out the links in the description below. And for more videos like this, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out. Thanks for watching.